Yo, I appreciate you doing this. Um, I was just curious with, with everything going on and the isolation we're in right now, how much of a challenge it's been for you having to, you know, communicate with your guys and still try to coach from afar a little bit and stuff like that. How much of a challenge has that been for you, obviously, because, I mean, none of us have ever really experienced anything like this before. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a challenge, but it's a challenge everybody else is facing too, right? So I think when you're faced with a challenge, the, the thing you try to do is, okay, how, what's the best way for me to attack this thing? And, um, and I think Coach Brown's mindset with, has been that way, and I, I think we've done a really good job. I, I feel really good about our preparation and how our kids are responding. And, um, you know, the enemy gets a vote, right? So you got the – everybody's got to deal with the virus the same way. So our thing is, you know – whatever you get dealt with, you deal with it and try to do it, you know, attack it the best way you can and come up in more positive than your opponents. Anything to follow up with, Jacob? I'm good, Jeremy. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Ross Martin, go Hey, Coach. I was wondering what we can expect to be the uh, major improvements in the defense heading into 2020. What things you may be able to do better um, that you weren't able to do in 19. I think the big thing, Ross, is I think our ability to play a few more, play, you know, play more people will help. I think that will help. Um, you know, there were some lulls in games that I thought were, you know, we, I didn't think we were very good in like early in the second quarter. And I think what happened a lot was started getting a little tired. Um, so I think that'll be a part of it. You know, but I think schematically the big thing will be our ability to play more defensive backs. And I think, um, we basically had to take Dominic Ross and make him a nickel week five. And, and he did a great job for us, but th there were just certain things we weren't comfortable doing with him that I think when it's, uh, you know, a DB with more DB kind of skills, it, it'll be a better fit for what we, you know, to expand, you know, defensively what we want to be able to do. And I think that's going to – I think you saw that the last two weeks we were able to move Trey Morrison in there some and uh, probably really helped us, especially, you know, third downs. Got anything to follow up with, Ross? Yeah, having more DBs and playing six DBs regularly, how does that improve and, and make your scheme more versatile and effective? Well, so I think when um, – you know, most of the offenses we see right now are pretty spread attacks, right? So when you're able to go put, you know, four – you know, five, six DBs out there and, and, and play a little bit more aggressive coverage, it gives you a lot more things to pick from. I mean, we were kind of forced into playing – a lot of zone coverage last year and, and, and we got good at it, but you know, if you can go be a little more aggressive and, and, and force the issue a little bit, it helps you a lot. And then I think, you know, in the run game, run defense, you know, I think we had some, some stretches where we, we got a little bit tired up front. And, and if, you know, I think in an injection of rotation, especially a D line will, will help us a ton. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, you guys didn't get any spring practices, but some schools got several. Some, I think, maybe even had uh, five or six spring practices. Um, how much of a disadvantage are you at in that you weren't able to implement any new things at all this spring? And if you only get a fall camp with maybe a couple extra days, how much of a crunch were you being in those early days to get some of those things implemented? Yeah, I think – I think if it had been a year ago, Andrew, it would have been really hard. You know, I think as a new staff, I think if you're a new staff right now, it's it's difficult. You know, with with the time we had spent with them, I think going to the bowl game and having those extra practices helped a lot. Um, you know, I don't know. I played Division three football. We we came back the day before camp started, and we and we we knew what we were doing by the time the game started. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident with our kids with what they've been doing. We've been installing new stuff, and, um, you know, it's not the ideal situation because we haven't been able to practice it. But, um, you know, we're going to be able to – whenever we get back, we're going to be able to hit the ground running with what we want to do on defense. Thanks. Where are you at, Luke? There you go. Luke Buxton, go ahead. Coach, I asked Phil this question last, last week, and it's more pertinent to you. Tommy Hatton, former offensive lineman with the app, learned to win, developed by him and some fellow UNC alumni. Kind of talk about, you know, you using that app and what it's done for you, and especially during this time when, you know, an app like this is the most vital with remote instruction and, and virtual plays. 
I don't know how much time he actually had with building the app, Luke, first of all. But, uh, yeah, we, so we used it all fall. Um, you know, I think, you know, kids, they are so tied to their phones. We all are, right? So I, I think anything you can do that gets it, information to their phones is really helpful. Um, I think our kids really like it. They like it, you know, if I gave them a paper packet, I, I just don't know how much that really um, is something they're used to learning from. So I think now the, the Learn to Win app is, has been really good to us. And hopefully Tommy hooks me up with some stock options or something because I think we were the first ones to really get it cranked up. But uh, we're using it right now a ton. And we're using it, uh, you know, a couple times a week with them right now as, as a, as a complement to what we're doing meeting-wise and film-wise. And uh, it's been really good. Anything to follow up with, Luke? No, that's it. Good. Greg Barnes, go ahead. Hey, Jay. Um, you leaned on Jason Strobridge and, and Aaron Crawford uh, really a lot early last year uh, along the defensive line. Just, just curious, what did you see out of the, the guys behind them as the season progressed? And how do you feel about that position right in the middle of the line heading into this year? Um, you know, when I got here, there was, a, there was a pretty big gap, I felt like, um, in the depth between Jason and Aaron as far as those two had played a lot of football. They were really talented, you know, good, tough, you know, veteran players. And then there was a, there was a gulf in the depth between the next group of guys. And so um, it took us a while for Jalil Taylor and Ray uh, to kind of come along, you know, Tamari Fox to come along. And, uh, and really by the end of the year, we were really playing Jason outside most of the game. Um, you know, really Jalil was playing inside more – Way, Jalil was playing way more inside snaps than, than Jason was. And then Ray really started to come along. Um, and, and I think we feel really, really I, – I feel really, really strongly about Tamari as a football player. So, um, I mean, I wish they'd let us keep Jason for another year. He's probably going to be a second or third on draft pick. I wish we'd get, like, you know, some kind of NCAA rule. But I don't know if he would sign up for that, but um, we certainly would because uh, he's a really talented kid. But I think, um, you know, I, I – I think Tamari is going to really be a, a dynamite player. I think Ray is going to come along really well. And I think Jalil, by the end of the season, was one of our best 11 players. So um, I feel really good about that. And I think that's a position that, you know, Tim Cross has done a great job recruiting. So we're excited about those kids coming in kind of so that there won't be that, that, that gulf in your depth, right? You'll be able to have a sophomore ready to play, uh, you know, a year from now. And I think that's going to be key moving forward. Anything to follow up with, Greg? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Uh, Jay, you mentioned uh, Trey Morrison a little, a little bit ago. Uh, he played, obviously, nickel as a freshman, uh, moved the corner for you last year. Now that you have quality depth there in the secondary, how do you foresee playing him, using him in the years to come? Yeah, so, like, I think Trey is a really, really good slot defender. Um, the problem is when you move a guy like Trey into the nickel, you know, the, the run game – uh, that the nickel's got to be involved with. You know, he's a 195-pound kid. You know, how many how many snaps you're going to ask him to go be a linebacker, right? Because you, it's a nickel linebacker, right? It's a small linebacker. So you've got to be able to kind of, um, you know, we talk all the time, but we need to have a big body there, a medium body there, and a little body. And, uh, and we thought going into the season last year, we could play Trey in there as the third down guy, as second and long against certain personnel groups. be able to have different guys in both spots, right? So it just depends on who we're playing and, and, and as the rest of that group grows up a little bit too. Hey, Greg, thank you. JB, I'm coming to you. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hey, okay, Coach, uh, thanks uh, so much for taking – about Chaz Surratt as far as uh, what was your plan for him going into uh, his next season, considering the success he had? And does this snag with the pandemic, you know, in the plans that you maybe had for him in spring, does this change anything you planned on um, doing for him and having him in a, a, in a better position for next fall? 
You know, that's a great question. I, I, I think, um, you know, with a guy like Chaz, the, the way football is now w- with how much time we spend with him in the summers and in the off season, like I, I don't know how many like super live reps he was going to get JB because we don't want him getting hurt. You know, so I, I think uh, it's funny. We, I FaceTime with him like Friday or was either like Thursday or Friday, I don't remember. And I told him like, you know, he's doing a great job, I think, right now of continuing his education as a linebacker with, uh, you know, with film work, with, with, with the stuff we're doing install-wise. And so I, I feel really good about how he's progressing. Um, I, I think being able to watch film with him, like, you know, I, I sat down with him a couple of times before all this, you know, started and, uh, and we're able to just watch his mistakes. And, 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 you know, you can watch with him. Football makes sense to Chaz. I've said that a bunch. So, uh, you know, I, I'm very confident that when we get back, he's going to be – a better player than he was when he finished up last year. And then physically, I think you know, he's, he's got some tools that very few people have. So I, I, I think he'll be, uh, he'll be way ahead of where he was at the end of last year. Pretty confident. All right. Thank you so much. No. Jonathan, I'm coming to you. We're hitting the mute button. Hey, so, Jay, how good is is Kyler McMichael, and, and what might he add to you guys' um, secondary and defense in general? Um, so I, I'll say this: I, I think he's really talented, um, but I haven't seen him do much yet, Jonathan. You know, so um, uh, but I certainly think he's got a skill set that very few people do. So, I, you know, there's you know, JBS about Chaz like. You know, Chaz was going to get a few reps and, and a lot of his mental work and individual stuff. You know, Kyler was a kid. I was excited to see him go play. And so I think Kyler's an example of a kid that, that missed his spring practice, hurt a little more. So um, but he's done a great job. You know, we, we give him quizzes every week. And when he gets one wrong, I call him and we talk about it. And I feel like he's making progress, too. But he is, he's got a, you know, he's a, a really talented, fast guy. Thank you. Bob, did I see you raise your hand? Yes, you did. Sorry, okay. I, lost the, I lost the mute button. I apologize for that. Or I lost the raise hand button, I mean. That's all right. Uh, Jay, was there anything, um, certainly not to this extreme, but when you were at Army, were there any re- off-season restrictions that you had that you maybe thought were kind of rough at the time that maybe don't seem so bad at this stage? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, Tim Cross and I talk about it all the time. Like, we laugh at some of these coaches. Um, I mean, at Army, it was like, it was not uncommon to get like, hey, you're not going to have your sophomores on Tuesday. Like, and like, you can spend, so like, you can spend your whole day complaining about it or just say, okay, how do we make this work? And I feel like that's kind of how we've attacked this thing. And uh, I think when we do get back together, whenever that is, the staff that have said, okay, what's the most creative way, the best way I can, you know, um, we spent uh, two hours this morning as a defensive staff trying to find a way to make the film better when we're doing Zoom meetings with our players. I don't know if everybody's doing that. And so I think when it comes when it comes back around and we are back together, then hopefully the work we put in is going to pay dividends, and I feel like it will. Yeah, so, I mean, you, work, you work at West Point now. You, you know, there's some hurdles, and, and, uh, and I think that's a you – know, and part of that is their training is they're getting ready to become officers, right? You know, the enemy gets a vote. I say it all the time, right? So, like, you better be able to adapt and overcome, and I think that's what we're trying to do. Was there anything else other than the no sophomore Tuesday example that you have? That oh, maybe... I mean, in the summer, you know, they, you know, they're gone for months. They lose weight. Um, I mean, there's they don't they can't come over like you don't get them. You know, Miles Dorn would come over and watch film all day long on his own. Like that doesn't happen there. You know, um, so you got to be creative in the ways you get the information to them. You got to be uh, creative in the ways you teach. Um, you got to practice different. I mean, everything about it there is a uh, is a challenge. So. Um, but that's what makes the place special. Thank you. Good, Bob. I'll add, tell Adam Smith I'm disappointed he didn't join us. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll share that. Please do. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, uh, Coach, I got two linebacker questions for you here. The first one, going back to Chaz, 
what specific things were you looking for him to show improvement in, not just this spring, but heading into the season? Um, yeah, I, I think angles, you know, I, I think uh, he missed a lot of tackles last year that, I, that athletically he shouldn't miss. And I think a lot of it was angles to the football. And I think that comes with experience. I think every week he got better at that. You know, like I, I, I remember watching it with him. I don't know, this was back in probably February. Him and I sitting there watching it, and we're watching some of the South Carolina clips, and he's like, "Oh," and I'm like, "Tell me about it," you know. And uh, and so I think you know he sees now like you know some of the leverage issues. I think for sure. And then I think um, the, the biggest discussion I've had with him is you know we we can't draw up every defense where you don't get blocked, you know. So I think you know you, your ability to shed blocks is going to differentiate you between being a really really good player and a great player. And I, and I think he was ready, and he, you know, and he. That's something that's hard to get taught in a in a spring, in a summer. You know, that, that's a that's that's years of work, and I think he's really prepared to go to work at that when we get back. Go ahead, Andrew. The, the other question is: a year ago, the biggest question going into the season was linebacker. Uh, now you have a few guys that are established and have a lot of experience. How do you feel about the depth at that position group? And are there – is it a scenario where you, you may not have to play a guy 80 snaps? You could play him 60 and maybe get him better at 60 because someone else is playing yeah. 20. I, I mean, I, I think um, I think Kyrie Jackson and Eugene Asante are both young kids that we, we feel very strongly about. And so I think hopefully they will be able to take some snaps off of Gimbal and Chaz's, you know, uh, plate. You know, Gimbal and Chaz pretty – I mean, I think Gimbal played every snap. You know, so I, I think uh, – I think Kadri and, and Eugene will be able to, to certainly do some of that. And I think they do some things better so, than Chaz and, and Jeremy you know, Gimmel do. So I think we've got to find ways to get them in position to do what they do better. And, um, but certainly, I mean, I, I feel I have no pause whatsoever with one of those kids going to the game where a year ago we would have been pretty nervous. So I, I think that's an improvement in that room. Good, Andrew. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ross, you're up. Yeah, I was going to ask about Kyle McMichael, but I'm going to switch since it's been asked already. Um, you know, I would think that the defensive line was one area that you would really need to spring for, but you seem so confident about the defensive line. What do you think – what part of your defense is most affected by the lack of the 15 spring practices? And you can yeah, use- I, th- I still think it's the D-line. I mean, I, I think um, it's hard to – you know, the, the DBs and the linebackers in the summer, they can, when we get back together, they can do seven-on-seven seven stuff and drill work. You know, D line is a is a physical, you know, hand to hand combat kind of thing. You know, so I think it's harder to simulate that than anything else on defense without practice. Um, and that that's our youngest. You know, that that's a spot where we've got some really young, talented guys that we want to get reps. Um, so I think that'll be that'll be a key when we get back is to manage getting reps for those guys. Um, you know, at the cost of not stressing out the other positions, but sh- certainly that's that's the position I'm most upset not being able to practice with. Yeah, I mean, and kind of a, to go along with an earlier answer, um, where do you think Strobridge is going to play in the NFL? You know, he played a lot of outside and in the 3-4, um, but inside as well. What do, you project, what do you think he projects in the NFL? Um, so I, I, I've had a lot of conversations with NFL teams about him. Um, I, I think in, in, the, in the primarily 4-3 teams in the NFL, they're looking at him as a – you know, as a first down defensive end that moves inside on pass rush downs. Um, I think in the three, four teams, I think some of them think he can stand up and be like what Taman is for us. Uh, I think some of them think he'll be big enough to be an inside guy. But I, I think everyone is really intrigued by him because he's a really good player that can do a lot. And, uh, you know, and I think playing in this defense and us moving him around and standing him up some and dropping him some, I think really increased his value because I think you see him now on film do things that 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 make him more attractive to every defense instead of just certain defenses. And that's where I think he's improved a lot. Aaron Beard coming to you. Yep. Hey Jay, um, I'm sure you guys broke down the film all last season of when you got done with everything, left and right, every in and out you could do. I'm curious, have you had to have you with all this extra time, have you gone back and tried to find anything else from it that maybe you missed? Or kind of what other resources are you trying to do when you've probably already studied the film from last year as much as you possibly can? 
Um, yeah, we've certainly gone back. You know, I have gone, watched it a bunch more. Um, I, I think I've spent more time, Aaron, on, you know, other looking at NFL defenses and, and, and trying to see things they do that fit what we do, you know, more so than, um, you know, we went through it pretty, you know, as a staff, you know, pretty aggressively um, back in, you know, January, February. So, um, but we certainly, as we're going through it with our players right now um, from last year, it, it's a lot of, you know, hey, look, let's look at this. This was really good for us, or this wasn't as good for us, and let's talk about why. Um, and then, you know, every year it's a little bit different. You know, every year you take some things out and add some things. So I think I've done a lot more of that right now. You know, gosh, should I just take this out because we want to, we, we really want to add this. And I think that's where the extra defensive backs start to come in. I really think that's the way college football is going. You know, you're seeing people play with six and seven DBs a lot um, just because of all the spread stuff. Anything further, Aaron? No, I'm good. Thanks, Jay. Leslie, coming to you. Hey, you guys are hot on the recruiting trail. I know this obviously affects every school with this particular time, but how do you hope to pick up that momentum when this is all said and done and you guys can get back at it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're doing really good right now. So, I mean, I think our momentum's kind of stayed pretty consistent compared to a lot of teams. I think the challenge for us is when we get back is just trying to get them all back here to see us again. Because you know, normally at this point we've had them on campus two or three more times, you know. So I think to get us back and, you know, you know Jeremy released a, you know, our, our new building. They did a great job with it. So I think, I think we've, got, we've got some things to, to bring them back and see. But, uh, no, I think right now recruiting-wise we couldn't be any happier. Anything further, Alyssa? Just uh, on top of that, you know, all the new facilities and everything that you guys have done to enhance the locker room. I mean, so much has been done since you guys got there and Mac got there. And what can you say about that? And I know it's pretty appealing to all these recruits. Yeah, and I work for Coach Brown. He's got a pretty good plan. So uh, I think when he got here, you know, he realized that was a that was, that's a part of recruiting, right? Is to is it is you know you need to have nice things, and um, I think he's done a really you know, him and Jeremy, Billy High, all, you know, Becca High, all of the people that work on those things for us have done a great job. And, and I think you got to thank Bubba for, you know, cause somebody's got to pay for it, right? Like I, I, I remind my wife when she wants to redo the kitchen, like somebody's got to pay for this. But uh, so Bubba's done that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think we did a great job, you know, with what we've done with the building. And, uh, and I think the indoor is awesome. So I think when you get people over here, you know, now it's a pretty easy, you know, you got a great university. I got great facilities and the way things are going right now, we feel really good about our future. Go to Pat James. Hey coach. Um, back before uh, all this kind of unfolded in February, uh, Coach Brown mentioned that Christian Varner had been a guy who uh, the strength and conditioning staff had been like really impressed by. I guess just kind of what are you kind of looking for from him? Just kind of how does he fit in that D-line group? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I thought at the end of the, the season, right? Like I, I, I think um, those bowl game practices we had, you know, a dozen or so, you know, I thought Christian Varner and, and Kevin Hester Jr., you know, those two kids were two, two D linemen that we signed that were kind of, um, you know, had some development when we signed them. And, uh, you know, there was a piece to them you knew they needed to get bigger and stronger. Um, and, and I was so impressed with how they worked in those practices and, and those are two kids, you know, we asked about, like, you know, the D-line practicing um, that I really wanted to see. But, you know, Christian Varner has changed his body. I mean, he is big. I mean, he's 290-plus. And, and I think um, for sure, you know, I think, you know, Christian Varner and Kevin Hester and, 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 and Keith Bingley-Jones, those three kids are, are, are physically the size that, you know, body types that you want to play with. So, uh but, you know, I, I think the thing with Christian Varner that's impressed me the most is, is Brian Hess. Brian Hess just raves about how hard he works and how strong he's gotten. And, um, so, yeah, I, mean, I can't wait to get back to work with that kid when we get, to, when we get back together. Anything further, Pat? Yeah, one more. You talked about talking to NFL teams about Jason Strowbridge and everything. You have a lot of guys who kind of graduated on that side of the ball who are kind of going through that draft process right now. How much have you kind of talked to those guys that they've been trying to navigate that right now? Um, yeah, so, so what I do with them is I just say, if I can help, let me know. You know, so if a team calls and has questions, I'll, I'll call them. 
um, and, and, and tell them, you know, what I think of those kids. I, I think the thing we've got that's pretty special is, you know, Dominique Ross, Miles Dorn, Jason Strobridge, you know, those three kids, we, uh, we did a ton with those guys. And they, they played multiple positions and, and put a lot of film out there of doing different things. And I think that's really valuable to NFL teams. And then I think Aaron Crawford, you know, his body type kind of limits his uh, versatility, right? But, but what a year he had for us. So I think all four of those, those guys improved their chances. And now it's just, a, you, know, you know, Coach Brown does a great job with the scouts. And I think we're just doing it. Ross testing the limit of his questions. Yeah, I didn't see any other questions, so I, I didn't want to take anybody's spot, but I, I, one other one. Uh, Coach Longo said he wakes up at 4.30 and is working out by 5. I was wondering your day-to-day -day schedule uh, in terms of meetings and meeting with players. Like, can you kind of give us a glimpse into the day in the life of a, of a Jay Bateman in quarantine? Yeah, I don't get up at 4.30. So, um, but, I, yeah, I mean, I got – my son gets up at, like – like 6.30 sleeping in. So I get up pretty early with him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so like um, two days a week we meet with our players. and I, So I meet with the linebackers at one time and the DBs at another time. Um, so I kind of work on those meetings um, in the morning, just getting ready for those meetings, getting the film and everything ready. And, um, and then I spend a lot of my time, honestly, with the recruits. You know, it's, you know, texting them, texting their moms, because they're out of school too. You know, so you do a lot more of that. And then I think the days that I'm not meeting with our players, I'm doing, you know, I'm looking at NFL stuff. I'm looking at opponents. Um, kind of pick one day a week to work on the, our first couple opponents and then one week to work on NFL stuff. And, and I go from there. I got my daughter breaking down uh, NFL film. I told, I told Jeff Schottmer today he's in trouble. She, she knows two high safeties versus one high safety better than he does. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, we're, you know, again, I'm trying to make the best of it. And, uh, and try to come out of this, at, you know, ahead of my opponent when we, when we get back together. That's that's my goal. So what are those uh, player meetings look like? Like how long and, and what are you talking about? You yeah, so it's basically – basically day. I did, Ross, because I took our – you know, our, we had 15 spring practices, and we don't install for scrimmages. We don't install for the spring game. So you end up with about a dozen installs. So I took, I took those and basically uh, made them into 12 meetings. And, you know, and added film to them. And, um, you know, and some of it's new stuff. Some of it's stuff we haven't done before. So we've got other colleges or NFL teams filming there with it. And we just kind of with them for about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and then we, we, we do that twice a week. So it's about six weeks worth of work. Um, and then we're using, you know, other things as, you know, to, like the Learn to Win app. I think somebody asked about it. We're using some other things to kind of complement those meetings.